As crazy as this sounds, I bought another plane. Let's go check it out. Okay, came down to fly today, but uh, the farther south I got, it started snowing. So I don't think I'm going to get to fly. But uh, what I will do is show you guys the new toy. Let me turn the camera around here and uh, show you what we got. Okay, a lot of you have been following along with my Sonics YXB build, and as you can tell, that aircraft is going to take me a while to build, uh, probably no less than a year, and considering how life gets in the way, sometimes I'm on the bet longer than that. So, in the meantime, I need to continue my aviation journey, and what i just did was purchase a new aircraft and <laughs> it's kind of bizarre i don't even have my private pilot certificate yet and now i own two aircraft um that's kind of how i go i guess uh so what i got was a 1969 piper cherokee 180d and let me tell you uh compared to the 140 that i had been flying in my training this Thing is fast. Now the 140 I was flying did have a 160 horsepower STC on it. So that was, you know, a pretty quick plane and a good climber for a 140 for sure. And um, this one only has about 20 horsepower more. But that 20 horsepower makes an enormous difference. This plane wants to fly. It wants to climb. Um, to be honest, I'm slightly intimidated, but I've only got about four hours in the left seat so far. So I will get used to it. Uh, I'm already enjoying it. I just need to retrain myself on, well, everything to some degree. Uh, the plane moves a little faster. So that means my decision making has to be a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Getting used to the pitch. Uh, the trim is a little bit different because the 140 I was flying had the trim on the ceiling. This one's down between the uh, uh, the front seats. So, uh, again, that's it's nothing big, just something to get comfortable with. So, I'm excited. So I'll let you know at the end how much I paid for the plane and what I plan on doing for uh, upgrades and taking care of it and things like that. So I'll give you a basic idea as to where I'm at. And I would like to get your opinions in the comments below. You tell me whether you think I got a good deal, um, whether I made a mistake, and if you think I'm on the right track with my plans, uh, because, you know, plans can change. And if people have valid opinions and, and good ideas, I'm definitely going to take them into consideration. So stay tuned to the end and we'll get you all those numbers. It is not nice out there right now. It is cold. I thought I would take a few minutes and uh, show you around the plane a little bit, but uh, I'm not going to be able to do too much of that without freezing my butt off. Uh, so I'm in the cockpit now. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour of what we have to work with and tell you what my plans are. Instrumentation is relatively old and stock and basically the only things that are remotely modern, and I won't even go so far as to say that, are we've got a Garmin GTX 327 transponder and we've got a Garmin GNC 250XL GPS. Uh, and a King KMA24 audio panel. Um, do have a four place intercom system and that's about it. So what we're working on is these two here are going away. I just got a couple of G5s in the mail the other day so we're going to be replacing these two, which in essence replaces the full six pack and gets rid of the vacuum system on the aircraft. 
Um, and that is just so I have a little more modern flying contraption for the time being while I finish my PPL. And then the next step in the spring, what I'm hoping to do is move this baby down a spot, um, eliminate this radio, this glide slope indicator, and replace the current GPS with a Garmin, I believe it is the GNC 355 and adding a Garmin, I believe it's a 106B glide slope over here so that I will have ILS and IFR capabilities to go on and get my IFR rating. So that's, that's kind of the goal uh, to keep this plane to finish my PPL and then move on and get my IFR rating. Um, possibly even my commercial after that. And if I'm brave enough, continue on and do some, uh, CFI work, uh, but not most, not for, not for revenue really, but mainly just to, uh, continue flying and to hopefully, uh, uh, help others that may not necessarily, uh, uh, find it easy to get into flying, uh, try and be helpful for the community and the aviation community and i'm not sure i'm going that route because that's a big commitment and um who knows i i i may or may not feel comfortable with that at that time but uh we'll see where we go okay you guys can see it is cold and windy and wet and uh some snow some rain uh so it's not a great day to give you a tour of the aircraft but uh you know, it's New England, so that's how things go. Uh, I've been interested in aviation for probably my entire life. Uh, I didn't realize I wanted to actually fly seriously until maybe 25 years ago. Um, I had an interest as a kid. I talked about it. I probably built model airplanes before I was building model cars. I had the interest in flying or wanting to know about helicopters and flying helicopters. And my uncle, who was a pilot in the Navy at the time, uh, I think he pretty much told me that I should learn how to fly uh, fixed wing aircraft first uh, before I would even consider uh, a helicopter. But uh, I never pursued it at all as a child. And I don't think anybody took me seriously. And I don't know if I took myself seriously, but uh, I've always had the interest in aviation. My first time in a small plane was when my wife and I were visiting Sedona, Arizona. We used to do that uh, probably at least once a year when we lived in Arizona. And at one point we were up there and saw some flyers or brochures for a scenic tour. So we did that. And I think I was a lot more impressed with it than my wife, but she suffers motion sickness. So I'm sure it wasn't as enjoyable for her. And... After that, I guess you could say I got the bug and it was there, it got its teeth in me and it hasn't gone away since. A uh, short time after that, I was uh, out with some buddies at a bar we frequented and turns out one of our friends and the bartender and manager of the bar was a pilot slash instructor. So he agreed to take me up and I went up with him a couple of times uh, that was in 2000 or 2001. And at that point, uh, I was just becoming a father for the first time. My businesses were taking off and didn't really have the time and energy to pursue that on top of everything else I had on my plate. So that got pushed to the, the back burner and, you know, life takes over. I've been flying regularly for six months now. I've been ready to solo for a few months and just waiting on the FAA medical. I had a head injury that related to a surgery in 1990, and I've never had any long-term effects from that surgery, but the FAA insisted that I get a neurological evaluation. No problem, didn't think much of it. Uh, unfortunately, it took them seven, eight weeks to decide that that's what they wanted me to do. So I lost that time. Uh, then it took me another six, seven weeks to 
get in to see a neurologist because everybody's so backed up right now. Not a problem. Went and saw him. He said, I'm fine, uh, which my general care physician and my instructor both knew that already and had written letters on my behalf. But uh, so it was, I believe, the first week of October that I submitted the final paperwork for my exam to the FAA. And here it is uh, mid to late November. I still have not heard back from them. I'm hoping it's going to fall into play about the same time frame that they did on the first decision they had to make, and that was between seven, eight weeks. So somewhere in the next week or two, I'm hoping to hear from them. Hopefully I have my medical. Then I can start soloing, even though I'm not super excited about it with winter coming. But hey, you know, that's just the timing. And uh, flying in not perfect weather probably just makes me a better pilot. So. Okay. I've been window shopping for airplanes for three to five years, and I was originally drawn towards the the Grumman's, the the A1s, the A5s, the Yankees, the Tigers, uh, just gorgeous looking planes. Uh, the Cherokee Piper uh, has always been on the list too. I think I'm more of a low wing guy than a high wing guy. Nothing wrong with the Cessnas and the other high wings. Um, I think the low wing is a better looking airplane. Uh, I like the idea of better visibility when making my turns, uh, coming in, you know, uh, downwind to base, base to final, uh, just better visibility. I like that. And the other aircraft I had looked at were some of the beach craft, the, uh, the Musketeers. I considered the Sundowner, but that wasn't going to play where I'm flying now because I think they need a lot longer runway. Um, KGBR has 2,600 foot runway and obstacles at both ends. So I want something that's going to be able to get up, get up quick and have a decent climb rate. And I think the sundowners take a little more time, especially on higher uh, density altitude days. So with all this window shopping and getting alerts from all the major sites as to what's available and I've been blown away as to what I've observed over the last three to five years, aircraft prices have gone through the roof. I mean, the, the Piper 140s, the Cherokee 140s, and the Grumman A1s, uh, the Yankees, just a year and a half, two years ago, I could have bought those things for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 easily. Um, and that would be a decent plane, uh, not a fixer-upper. And those very same planes right now are selling for double or more. And that just blows me away. Uh, bad, bad timing on my part. I didn't get back into the, uh, the hobby early enough, maybe, but it's okay. Everything happens when it's supposed to happen. Uh, I don't want to rush anything, but it was a shock and, uh, it hits the wall a little bit harder here and seeing how the prices are going up. I decided to go with a plane that's going to take me farther in my path or my journey. Um, my original thought was to get a trainer plane, uh, a two-seater or one with uh, lower useful load and fly that for a year or two and then move on and pick a forever plane. But I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the pricing, so I made the jump. I decided to go for the 180. I found one. I uh, came up on a, with a discussion uh, with another gentleman on Facebook. Uh, this plane was not on the market. It was not on any of the big sites. And he wasn't asking an arm and a leg for it. So uh, just an arm. And, you know, hey, the way things are today, I wasn't going to complain. Uh, another reason I ended up with this plane is he wasn't ready to sell yet. On top of that, I wasn't ready to buy yet. I had a commercial building that was on the market under contract for sale, and that had some hiccups during the closing, so it took a little longer to close. But in the long run, the timing worked out perfectly for both of us. He was ready to sell when I closed the deal, so it was kind of a no-brainer. Uh, he flew the plane down here from New Hampshire, and I had the AP here at Berkshire Aviation do a thorough pre-buy on it. Everything checked out. Plane's fantastic. It has 
just hit 6,000 hours on the total airframe time. And um, let's see, the engine has just over 1,500 hours on it. But about 300 hours ago, just before the uh, gentleman I bought this from, uh, the previous owner had a prop strike. And a prop strike is a prop strike, but this was a very light prop start. I even have a picture. I might insert it here. Uh, just barely scuffed the corner of the prop, but the entire engine was torn down. Uh, I think it's called an Iran inspect and replace as necessary. So they went through the entire engine just 300 hours ago. I know that isn't the same as a since major overhaul, but I've got to... Some part of my brain is just telling me this plane's probably easily got a thousand hours left on it. Um, TBO is about 500, but due to the Iran, I think you get a little bit of a freebie there. Um, you wouldn't be able to get away with that if it's being rented or trained in, but as a private owner, I think I'm fine with flying beyond the TBO as long as my engine instruments and inspections keep turning out. My oil analysis uh, uh, keeps showing up clean. And the previous owner does have oil analysis. I have those and I'm gonna continue that same practice. So I'm excited about that. Okay, I think it was somewhere in the 70s where a couple of speed mods were done to this plane. So the leading edges and tops of the wings were uh, smooth. So the rivets were had a very thin layer of super, super light Bondo applied to them, so there's no rivet heads. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company that uh, offered that modification, but if I can remember it, I'll put it in the description below. And that was supposed to gain you a little bit of airspeed, less resistance, uh, and at the same time, they put on, I think they're called gap seals, which is on the lower side of the wing between the wing itself and the ailerons and the flaps. There's these uh, sheet metal panels. I think I got a little video or, or photos and I will try and sneak that in here. And these speed mods, that's what they do. They, they hopefully reduce the resistance and increase the speeds of the plane. So in addition to the 180 horsepower, that's another little gain. In fact, I think there was even some uh, modifications done to the wheel pants. Um, I have those in my warehouse. I got a little video or pictures. I will put that in here if I can. And again, she's not a beauty, but uh, she flies straight, fast, and climbs like a champ. So I'm excited.